Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a YouTube RSS feed to your WordPress website for free. In this example, I will be using the Elementor page builder to add the YouTube RSS feed. The good news is that you can pull this off just using the free version of Elementor if you don't have Elementor Pro. So here's an example of what we're going to be pulling off in this tutorial. And the way it works is WordPress by default has an RSS feed widget built in. If you have a YouTube channel, we can target that RSS feed three different ways. You can do it by the channel ID, the channel username, or down here, which I like the best is you can actually target a specific playlist on a YouTube channel. So I'm going to show you how to add all of these widgets to your website for free. So let's jump into the back end of the website so I can show you how I was able to set this up. So if you have something like an Elementor or this actually will work across pretty much any page builder, it's, it's all built into WordPress. But in this example, if you just go into Elementor and type in RSS, you're going to see right here, this is actually just a native WordPress RSS feed widget. So in Elementor, you just click and drag that in right over here. So let's go jump into the first example and I'll show you how easy it is to set this up. So in this example, we want to grab the channel ID. Now, if you're not familiar with how YouTube works is every YouTube channel has a channel ID. That is the default way that people can find your videos. Once you hit a certain status, I think it's like 100 subscribers, you can actually have a custom URL, which down here would be something like slash wiki design or slash Mr. Beast, whatever it may be. And then down here, we can just do a regular playlist. So just want to make sure that you understand that there are two different ways that you can grab basically the same thing. So let's go ahead and let me show you what the RSS feed looks like. Uh, the URL and how easy it is to change it out. So if you look right here, all you need to do is enter in the RSS feed. So YouTube by default has a feed automatically for every YouTube channel out there. So the URL is youtube.com slash feeds slash videos.xml and then the question mark channel ID equals. So this is what we need to change out right here. And I'm going to show you in a different window over here how you can grab that ID. So here we are on our YouTube channel right here. And to grab a channel ID, you just need to grab this right here and just paste that into where I just showed you. And let me show you an example of what a username looks like. So if you go to certain channels, sometimes YouTube will default to their um, custom URL or username instead of this long string of ID. So you just need to figure out if the channel that you want to have in the RSS feed is either the regular ID or a custom URL. And if you look right here, that was the ID. So you just copy that right here. And if you look right here, this is a very similar. So instead of an ID right here where it says user equals, you, in this example, I put in Mr. Beast, what was that 6,000? So I wanted to show you an example of, this is the wiki design one. And this is Mr. Beast. So if we go up here, you can see it's just channel ID equals this is the wiki design and Mr. Beast. So you can see right here, um, the widget itself doesn't have a lot of options and you can't really customize it that much, but it's a good uh, free widget if you just want to have something built in. So what you could do is type in uh, whatever you want your title to be right here. And so it pulls in, this is the title and it shows a little RSS feed icon. So people know it's a feed. And then down here, you just are able to choose between one to 20 different items. So if I go to 20, of course, it's gonna show the 20 videos right here. Uh, but you can do right here the item author. So it's always uploaded as wiki design. And then down here, you can toggle on and off the date. And those are basically the only options that you have. Um, but what is nice is this is all just a, a regular CSS list. So you can actually style this up a little bit different. I'm gonna show you how to do that later in the tutorial. Now let's jump down to how you can pull in a playlist. So this URL is a little bit different. So you can see it's youtube.com slash feeds video, and then it's called playlist ID. So it doesn't say channel ID or username. This one says playlist ID equals. And let me show you how you can easily pull that ID. Let me pull up that other browser here. And if we go to um, one of our playlists, so if you just go to a channel, click on playlist, and let's say we want to grab this playlist right here. So I'll pause this. And if you look right up here in the URL, 
you just need to copy this right here. So where it says list equals, and then this long string, that's your playlist ID. So you just copy that and then paste it back into right here. And let me show you if a feed doesn't work at all. In this example, you can see that it just is not going to show anything. So you're going to know if it's right as soon as you enter in the list ID. And that's it. You have the same options down here. You can do the item, author, date, you know, that the standard kind of stuff. Now let's hit update. Make sure that this all works in the front end of the website. Here we are on the front end of the website and you can see everything looks like it's working correctly. So this is the wiki design feed right here with 20 of them. We got Mr. Beast right here with 10 different ones. And then here is our Elementor playlist. And as you can see, it automatically adds these titles right here. And if you click them, they should go to the YouTube channel. So if you go here, this should go to Mr. Beast. Yep. And then uh, the one thing I did find out is uh, if you have your playlist, the titles don't link anywhere correctly. So what we can do is actually with some CSS, we can actually just hide this. And then instead of relying on the widget to have the um, title, we can just do it in Elementor. So I'll show you how to do that right now. If you need to hide the title, um, it will require a little bit of CSS and I'll show you how easy it is to pull off. So if you look right here in the inspect widget, um, this widget itself is just an H5 um, title. So all we really have to do is just hide that H5 if you wanna hide it completely. So let's go down to that widget itself. And like I said in the beginning of the video, you don't need Elementor Pro to pull this off, but I'm gonna show you how to, you can easily just do it right here with CSS. Um, so if you're using the free version, what you're gonna to have to do is create a custom CSS class, um, you know, call it like playlist embed, and then target just the H5. But in this example, I'm just gonna show you how to do it right here. It's a little bit quicker. So you can say just for this selector, this widget, anywhere there's an H5, let's do a display, and then just type in none. And there you go. You can see, let me just take that out so you can see. So right here we have the playlist and then with that little bit of CSS, um, take away all the H5s. It's as simple as that to hide the titles. And like I said, if you wanted to, let's say just duplicate this, you can click and drag this down here. And now you're gonna have a lot more control if you're using something like Elementor. You know, you just type in like a playlist feed or something. And then that way you actually have a lot more control over text, typography, anything along those lines. Now let's go ahead and say you wanna style these up a little bit. And like I said, this is actually just a regular unordered list in CSS. So you can, anything that you can do with CSS to style up list or anything like that, you can just do that right within the, uh, the widget. So same thing right here, let's type in a selector. And then let's just target everything that's a on order list. And let's just say we want to do the font size. So you just click on font size, 20 pixels, and there you go. You can see it automatically just is increasing only on this widget. So that's what's nice is you can just target certain things. Um, if you have Elementor Pro, you can just target the selector. So you don't have to do like a custom CSS class or anything like that. And that's it for this video. Let me know if you were able to add this to your website easily. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new videos like this. Thanks again. This is Mark from Wiki Design.